So today we have a very interesting topic that I wanted to do for a long time. Something that doesn't require much editing because I've been super busy the last days, but something that I really wanted to do for, for a while and I specifically did not click on this one button yet, so you get my genuine reaction to this as well. So obviously you have uh, your stats on casual smite, rank.casualsmite.com, uh, where you can go under, under the different modes and see how well guards are performing. I think those stats are always very interesting. I, I use them for some videos and everything. And what you can see here, among other things, is how guards perform through our different divisions. And the two that always stand out, in a way, are Grandmasters and Bronze, because they're usually different from the rest. Grandmasters has an incredibly small sample size, so no surprise there. I am actually not sure how Bronze is counted, like with, with qualifiers not being uh, the same as before anymore. I guess in a way they still kind of exist, but... Um, yeah, but either way, I think the sample size and bronze should also be relatively small. But either way, what I thought was very interesting is that many, many guards that are like high tier uh, actually perform worse in bronze or, or better in bronze than you would expect. Um, here, Hades, for example, is one of those 46% winner in bronze and then all of a sudden goes up to 57 in silver. And I wanted to see what happens if we click on this tab and we just go to bronze and we just see who the top guards and the worst guards in bronze are. We know some of the worst guards, like Persephone, I bet, is going to be among them, but I, I'm really curious what's going to happen. All right, let's go. Okay. That... Oh, no, wait, we have to... I was going to say... If to, no. How does that work? Oh. Okay, that is not the outcome I expected at all so the highest win rate in bronze is 50 percent because the bronze players play against silver players and they lose and therefore the guards don't reach 50 percent win rate Okay, that is very fascinating. That explains why all the gods have lower win rates in bronze. And it actually makes me wonder how that can even be factored into the into the average across all ranks, because that makes it very, very confusing, because it basically means that almost all gods would like if it's factored in the same way, almost all gods in bronze would drag down the other players. So that must mean that the sample size let's see. Does it tell us how many is that the overall pick and ban rate? Okay, let's see. If we just go all ranks. 61,000. Well, no, there's still 5,000 picks in bronze. So there's still a decent number of players, which we compare. We can compare that to Grandmasters. Yeah, you see, like Grandmasters is like 130 or 2 or something like that. So it's like super, super low numbers. Um, maybe, though, if we go for... Let's see. What's a high pick and ban rate? Yeah, high pick and ban rate in, in, in Grandmasters is 590. So there's a much bigger sample size. If we get silver, okay, silver is still much bigger than bronze. So it's like like five times as big as, as bronze. So bronze is still a small sample size, but not nearly as small as grandmasters in comparison. And still the vast majority of games is lost. I mean, I, I guess it makes sense because otherwise, like, how are you going to end up in bronze? You have to lose a lot of games. That is so interesting. And now, now let's look at the guards here, um, which, like... Some are actually surprising to me, but some are not. So Nuwa is surprising to me in second place. I guess in a way it helps that her minions do stuff by themselves. So like the AI attacks for you. And it also helps that the ultimate hits the entire team. So you can always have at least a little bit of an impact. Anubis, not really surprising. You know, it, it, he's good in general at the moment. And obviously in Bronx, he would still do very, very well. Uh, because people don't know how to counter play if they're silver or something. Cupid? Also interesting to me. I mean, Cupid is a very strong guard in general right now. Maybe the sustain. Maybe there's like a lot of weird builds in in um, in Bronx where you would uh, get he like out healed by Cupid. Like maybe maybe many people don't build life steals, for example, and then he just bullies in lane and out heals them. Or people don't know how to count the ultimate. At the same time, like his heart bomb is not the easiest to hit ability, so it's. It's interesting to me that he's doing quite well. And he has a high pick rate here as well. It's like Maybe that's just one dedicated... <laughs> no, it must be more than one dedicated player, but like a few dedicated Cupid players that make that happen. 
Nike, I guess my her passive is tuned down, but I guess that that's still a factor. And the ultimate is also something that will always have a big impact no matter how you're doing. But then Horus is also surprising to me. Like I wouldn't expect Horus to be among the top gods in Bronx because like I would expect his ultimate to often not be used that effectively. And then, well, he still has a good kit and he has a heal and everything, but he's not someone I would expect at the top. Oleron I would expect that because Oleron is incredibly easy to play no matter where. Uh, but at the moment, but yeah, there's some surprising ones here. Ganesh, I'm also not quite sure. I mean, Ganesh, again, a good guard in general at the moment, but I'm not sure how he does so well in Bronx. And neither with Discordia. It really makes me wonder, like, what what are the strats? <laughs> what are the strats that lead to these outcomes? Um, Hades, again, not very surprising that, that he's doing well in general because Hades is just, just a very strong guard. And I think especially on low levels of play, very hard to counter as well. I want to see page two as well. Wow. I mean, we always have to keep in mind they all have negative win rates, so maybe it's like sometimes it's not even about like the it's like a, a pick pick and win rate question together. Um, but yeah, like that's that's surprising that Chang is like in the top. I can't. No, I guess it makes sense. You can like you cannot really miss the one and the three in most situations, and at that point it doesn't really matter that much if the ultimate hits. It seems that it's a bit of a pattern with uh, sustained guards in general, like Sylvanas here as well, like life still seems to be very good. But then someone like Artemis is also surprising. Maybe not enough ganks. But then what explains Hunbats? Hunbats is a team fighting god, and he will not have team fights in Bronx. There's a lot of things here that are really a mystery to me. Let's see. Let's see what happens if we go on the pick and ban rate. Cthulhu is the most banned god in Bronx. Okay. I did not expect that. I mean, Cthulhu is strong for sure, but I don't think that... I wouldn't be... As a Bronx player, I don't think I would be scared by a Cthulhu from another Bronx player more than the gods that follow below. Like, I'd be more scared about a Bakasura for sure. That's someone I expected there. I'd be more scared about an Arachne for sure. I am not sure what's up with Emoja here. Like, maybe that's just like a perception that she's really strong for wrong players. But like, Emoja is a very strong guard, but she's not strong in low divisions. So, like, as you can see from the win rate. So it's really just a, yeah, must be a perception thing. Maybe they just don't like the heal. And then you have Freya, which is uh, very obvious as well. Like, the logic is there. Like, Freya is just annoying and... and, and uh, even if her win rate is low, I can see why you wouldn't want to deal with her. But then Persephone, like that—that's why I think, like that's why I think this is more of a we just copy the higher tier bands than anything else. Because why would Persephone be a top ban with a thirty-three percent win rate? Like you won't find people in those divisions that are good enough at Persephone. I think because if if you are good at Persephone, you're just gonna grind up through the ranks very quickly. I would expect. As long as she's not banned. Well, I suppose I suppose maybe they're afraid of that one Persephone that might be grinding up for Bronx somehow, Silver. Uh, that could be good, but... Nemesis, I think, is really, again, like a more reasonable ban. Oleron was certainly a more reasonable ban. Aphrodite is something you can very much understand in those divisions as well, and I can understand Anubis, but... Yeah, it's just like it's like a mix of the gods where you'd think, yep, yeah, that's what happens, and then there's some in there that is just like... Are you sure those are your biggest problems in the, on this level of play? But then, yeah, bit bit of perception. Maybe maybe like the teammates would be too upset if they don't ban them or something, uh, that kind of stuff. I also want to see the lowest win rate. Okay, no surprise with Janos at all. Like the, the mechanical skill that's required to play him, it's not extremely high in my opinion, but still, the impact without a decent level of mechanical understanding of the guard is is too low. But by Yaga surprises me. Um, a little, I would say, not extremely. I'm just saying, ah, oh, okay, yeah, didn't expect that like to be a primary one. Ola doesn't surprise me. Obviously, it needs uh, his combo to land to be effective. Persephone doesn't surprise me at all. Just need to understand the god first. King Arthur doesn't surprise me. You need to be pretty good at King Arthur to make him work at the moment. Sir Cat, well, I I keep saying that I don't think Sir Cat's a hard god, but I, I based on these stats, I kind of will have to. Uh, revoke that statement somewhat, I suppose. It, it seems like a lot of people... Maybe they just don't even know how the combo works properly. 
AMC is someone I would have never expected to have a super low win rate in Bronx because he's not that hard to play. And her, on the other hand, I can completely understand. Like he's the the measurement of mechanical skill and reaction time in, in duel. So yeah, absolutely logical. Thoth is another one that I can completely see. And let's see page two. Susano. <laughs> what? Um Okay. I guess they just try too hard to attack cancel and then just don't do it properly and, and, and then lose too much damage instead of just going for full damage. I wonder I wonder if I can see the builds. Is this the builds just for Bronx? I bet if it is just for Bronx, like I expect Hydra's Lament. Yeah. To be like one of the most used items that leads to one of the lowest win rates. <laughs> so see that's what I'm always talking about with Susano, like or with Hydras and AA cancelling in general, like, you guys are overrating that. It's good, but it's overrated, because the highest win rate here comes with Crusher, with Heartseeker, and even Jolton's has slightly more. Like, all the ability-based stuff gives you more. I mean, ironically, Warrior Tabe. But I guess that's also because you sell Warrior Tabe late game, and then uh, you get something else, so you don't need it. Yeah, so a team that doesn't have Warrior Tabe in the build anymore because they, the game went far enough would get a higher win rate than the team where the player still has Warrior Tabe and that lowers the win rate automatically. So Hydra's Lament. It's not that necessary. It's too hard counted at the moment. Mo maybe not in Bronx, but generally speaking. So maybe that explains this win rate. I think it's just too many people trying too hard to AA cancel and, and doing dual stuff um, instead of just getting the basics of the guard down first and then trying to do that. Uh, I wanted to see who else is there, though. Oh, what happened? I wanted to see who else is there. Red Tusker. Yeah, probably, like, all the acorns is a lot of confusion. But then it gets interesting. I don't know why Hell and Habois are so low, because Hell is not that hard to play on, on a base level. And she's a healer, which should do relatively well in, in low divisions. And Habois... I guess a lot of people just say, like, yeah, he's too strong, blah, blah. I need to pick him every game, and then they're actually not good at him or something. Because, you know, I think the three olds meme is very real in bronze. And then you have, like, Thor, Rage, and... Yeah, yeah, I can see that. You know, a little bit of aim. Hercules hits a lot of aim as well. If you don't hit the combo, it doesn't really work. Yom Gunder is probably just, like, a team fight issue. It just doesn't... Can't really close out games. Well, Fenrir is generally not that good at the moment, in my opinion. Morrigan also definitely among the hard ones. But actually looking at it, it's interesting how many guards here are performing worse than the Morrigan. Like, I would have expected the Morrigan to be, like, like way here somewhere, but I guess, like, her base kit alone does decent enough, at least, for, for people to, to work with it. Very interesting. Um, the last thing I want to see is K.A. Who, who gets the kills? Probably Arachne and Nemesis... And Raven. I can see Raven. I can absolutely see Raven. Like, you know, you just just, just uh, run at them, throw your kit at them. That's not very hard to do. And even if you don't hit the ultimate, it's still enough damage over time. You can dodge some decent damage. And you have some interesting ones here, like Xing Tian Fafn. Like, what? Sun Wukong, I can absolutely see as a lane volley and get the aggression going early. Bahman. Yeah, it's pretty hard to stop with this ultimate as well. A Willish surprising? Or what I guess it's like. She gets the KDA, but the win rate, yeah, the win rate is, isn't, isn't the highest, at least. Though Raven is more interesting, because Raven gets such a high KDA, but such a such a low win rate. Oh, um, maybe it's also... No, never mind, the pick rate is not that low. Oh, yeah, there's some interesting ones here as well, like our Conquerly. Very, very interesting stuff. I wonder how these sets are going to change when, when Tsukuyomi comes out. All right, that's that's it for today. I just wanted to have a look at this. I just wanted to explore this a little bit, the the depth of uh, of Bronx. Uh, I hope I didn't offend anyone by doing so. I thought it was very interesting, actually. Uh, I, like I like how there's like these these mini metas that develop on different levels of play between, be it like the different rank divisions, the rank divisions in themselves, and uh, like the the higher area of the rank divisions, the lower area, uh, and then well, casuals having a little bit of a different meta once again because you don't have bans and everything, which which affects certain picks around certain guards as well. Yeah, I think that's just generally interesting stuff. I hope you enjoyed this as well. And uh, if you're new to the channel, feel the sub button and maybe the bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. We'll have a lot of stuff in the next days of a lot of different games, but also some smart stuff uh, along with that. 
I've just been grinding games basically nonstop for, for two days now because I wanted to try out all the new games that came out. And other than that, uh, see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out. <laughs>